ओम अखंडम सच्चिदानंदम अवांग मनसगोचरम आत्मानम अखिलाधारम आश्रय भीष्ट सिद्धये I take refuge in the self the indivisible the existence consciousness bliss absolute beyond the reach of words and thought and the substratum of all for the attainment of my cherished desire so in the vedanta sara we were saying that um, oh, prabhu baba already has a question all right I, sorry I, i'm going to read this question to you because i've been thinking about this is bugging me okay so no we we talk people have given advaita vedanta a bad name because of this maya thing because if, you know he said somebody about the maya body now <clears throat> we have studied mandika upanishad and karika and uh, it can be established advaita vedanta can be established the philosophy can be established without invoking maya we can just use avidya vidya vidya so my question is even gita 2.16 you know if you start as a bichar you can establish what we are trying to say so why did uh, what drove shankaracharya to bring in this maya concept all right was it a mistake no of course not maya is a mistake but bringing in maya maya means a mistake but bringing in maya but we don't need mistake. but we yes. really don't need it no we do uh, define maya now i'm going to throw these questions back at you we have studied it uh, enough now what is the definition of maya you see it is it, it's ignorance ignorance right samashti agyana the, the cosmic ignorance that is maya that's the definition of maya so when you say uh, we don't need uh, maya we can uh, use ig- uh, ignorance you said we can use vidya vidya agyana that is ignorance it's the same thing so why do we get a bad name uh, this mayavadi and all that stuff <laughs> it's i've heard it... from at least two people i mean you know i talked to a, a sanyasi who was, he's a devotee of anand mahima yeah. and he he said the brace the same thing oh you guys don't yeah i mean we are just being polite uh, there's just about no philosophy on earth or no theology which can hold a candle to advaita vedanta if we are mayavadi i don't even know why it's a bad thing if we are mayavadi every t- everybody else is uh, uh, is superstitious um, all others every other dualistic philosophy anything any religion any philosophy let me be plain what is the proof that it's true where is this god of yours all the things in your books they're just in the books they're all contradictory to each other where is it grounded in personal experience it's no no ultimately we will see uh, god well ultimately i don't know i mean there is uh, no no guarantee of that and those who have seen how do you know they are not uh, hallucinations or uh, aberrations only advaita vedanta and uh, to some extent i would say Uh, the yoga chara madhyamaka synthesis of tibetan buddhism which says basically the same thing in my view uh, they are grounded entirely in the phenomenology of our experience phenomenology means a description of our own experience lived experience it's entirely about what is right now it is it is the one th- philosophy which uh, satisfies the demand for proof experience and like no other and it is also the one philosophy which satisfies our demand for rationality it is the one philosophy which is uh, comfortable with science with modern science so yeah the reason people say that is from a dualistic perspective from a theistic perspective it's very scary when uh, when you look confront something like advaita vedanta that we have ignorance see ultimately if we are brahman we do not know it we have to admit that we don't know it the, the moment you admit we don't know it that that's ignorance that's what we are talking about okay all right thank you yeah. thank you very right. much um in fact it's just the other way around where uh, there is this old saying in uh, among the advaita vedanta teachers that the jackals of all the other philosophies in the forest of philosophies all the jackals they run when the lion of vedanta roars advaita keshari <laughs> all the others are jackals compared to the lion of vedanta 
nothing comes even this if it's not even in the same category in the in the same uh, uh, you know uh, i mean uh, at the same level at all with advaita vedanta what else is uh, in fact you know if you think about it carefully even science would be superstition compared with advaita vedanta because it would be in the in the realm of maya it's it's in, a, in the realm of appearance Thank you, Mahatma. Right. So, now, what we have studied is that ultimately, Advaita Vedanta is pretty simple. I keep saying that you can always reduce it back to the first principles. That is, um, there is only consciousness or awareness. Sat, vastu Satchidananda Madhvayam Brahma. The reality is existence, consciousness, bliss, the non-dual Brahman. Everything else is an appearance. Now, we saw that first uh, maya or ignorance this consciousness associated with ignorance is um, is is at the causal level ignorance is the causal level it's called the causal body consciousness associated with the causal body um, is ishvara on the cosmic scale and um, pragya or the individual sentient being at our individual scale from this um, cosmic ignorance is produced or appears the five subtle elements so for these five subtle elements are combined and recombined to form the subtle bodies so the same consciousness the one real consciousness in association with the subtle bodies with all the subtle bodies is called hiranyagarbha the con- or the cosmic mind and in association with each individual subtle body is called taijasa us the sentient the, our individual minds or subtle bodies and then again from the combination remember the five fold quintuplication combination of the the five subtle elements uh, we have the five uh, gross elements pancha mahabhuta which are combined to we saw in the last class combined to form the 14 worlds the physical universe our bodies you know four types of bodies you remember born from the egg born from the womb born, born from uh, moisture born from the earth and uh, in 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 connection the same consciousness limited by this physical body is called vishwa individually and total all physical bodies taken together consciousness limited associated with that is called virat um it is still the same consciousness and that's the only thing that's that's real remember what is going on here superimposition and desuperimposition uh, there is the like the rope is mistaken for the snake that is superimposition and then you correct the error that it is not a snake it's a rope um, that is called desuperimposition similarly here brahman or consciousness is mistaken for this world you know, subtle bodies causal bodies physical body gross bodies um, external universe multiple jivas all of this is the like the snake which appears when you correct this error it's not a world it's not jiva jagat ishvara world individual god it is actually that absolute reality and you are that absolute reality that will be desuperimposition so that's the goodie though the goodies are coming the desuperimposition part is coming right now we are world building but remember the world in advaita vedanta is not ultimately real it's an appearance we are sort of snake building we are now superimposing the snake on the rope we are mistaking we are making a mistake now how did we get from the rope to the snake that's what's going on right now um and we are almost at the end of the process the snake in all its glory is going to cover we have we have got the subtle bodies we have got the uh, we have got the causal bodies we have got the subtle bodies now we are getting the gross bodies that's where we are at and i want to i'm sorry for hurrying us through this actually we should have taken more classes for each uh, section but i am impatient eager to get to the the good parts which are going to come the really interesting stuff remember when i said it's entirely comfortable with science i've been mentioning this earlier advaita vedanta all of this you're talking about the 14 worlds and the four kinds of bodies and you know the various gods at different levels the devatas all which will be mentioned today also um since it's part of the appearance advaita vedanta is not committed to that in principle i'm not i'm not being uh, like you know over clever or, or slippery here i quite admit that 500 years ago 700 years ago when this book was written uh, um, if you ask 
did these people actually believe the world was like this 14 worlds and uh, the variety of gods and and the way it's described in you know, this world uh, was it like is it like this did they actually believe or not um, or did they think it's just a superimposition yes they believed it they believed it was this was a fair description of the world they didn't have the advantages of modern physics or chemistry or biology but but here's the big difference unlike every other theology unlike every other realistic philosophy realistic means which considers the world to be real uh, this for this philosophy has no uh, has no investment in has nothing at risk here if you say that no 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 forget all your 14 worlds and all this quintuplication you know mixture of subtle elements into gross elements we have a much much more powerful world view modern science gives us a much more powerful world view very good um, take that it has absolutely no problem with that uh, as long as it is all reducible back to being itself or consciousness itself fine even today is this valid yes but you would have to do a lot of clever reinterpretation uh, in the sense that these are symbolic of um, you know maybe of a different way of looking at the same world and it's quite possible it's not crude it's it's a pretty sophisticated way of looking at the world actually did you notice how the five elements are connected to the five senses they they serve as basis for five types of sense exp- experience so it's a very um phenomenological way of looking at the world uh, phenomenological means our subjective experience the way we experience the world this is actually a description of that and as a description of of the way we experience the world in terms of forms and sounds and smell and taste and touch it's a pretty good description actually now we're going to go to text number 110 we're going to go ahead on our journey and i'm not going to take my foot of the gas uh, we're going to speed ahead and uh, complete this section little bit as fast as possible all right so now this is what we have got the gross universe subtle universe causal universe and the ultimate reality pure consciousness we've got the rope and its appearance as the snake now what 110 text number 110 atrapi chaturvidha sakala sthula shariram eka aneka buddhi vishayata vishayataya vanavad jalashaya vadva samashtir vrikshavad jalavadva vyashtir api bhavati here also all the gross bodies in their fourfold variety may be spoken of collectively or individually according as they are thought of as one like a forest or a lake or many like the trees and the quantities of water um here also here also means in this physical level when we have got this physical bodies chaturvidha four kinds of physical bodies if you say what are the four kinds we remember as a very kind of basic kind of biology of beings born of the womb and of of seeds of what of eggs and from the earth and from moisture and so on they may be spoke, spoken of collectively or individually according as they are thought of as one like a forest or like a lake uh, one of it like a forest and jalashaya avad like a lake you can talk about it about it as samashti total or um, vyashti individual um, the same lake you can think of it as drops of water or one lake or the same thing you can think of it as thousands of trees or one forest similarly you can think it of think of this as billions of individual bodies or one cosmic body notice here i just uh, remark um this idea of a cosmic person which is the idea of god in advaita vedanta the idea of a cosmic person there's an element of faith involved here uh, i exist i know and you all exist my senses reveal you to me that there are these Uh, i can see now 67 participants i'm sure there are 67 physical bodies and 67 subtle bodies in those physical bodies uh, so 67 sentient beings are participating but all of these 67 plus the 7 billion people and the billions more um, living beings all together there is a unity there is a being which considers itself as i am all of this the god of this universe that is not revealed to me directly i don't know i only hear about it 
the one person who experienced it was Arjuna. He wanted to experience it and he asked Krishna, could you show me that cosmic form? This is what we're going to talk about, the cosmic form. What did Arjuna see? And Krishna did show him in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. That is called Vishwarupa Darshan. Vishwarupa and Virat are the same thing. So, and for all the good that it did Arjuna, he was terrified when he saw that. He was a, a mind-blowing experience. He immediately prayed, go back to your earlier uh, individual point of view. Maybe we are not, we are not uh, meant to see that. It, it could blow our fuses if we saw the entire universe as one being. And then imagine the being turning and looking at you. <laughs> what would that be like? Arjuna says, every hair on my body is um, uh, standing on end. And uh, my, uh, you know, like, I'm stunned and horrified, like, literally, at, at, at seeing this sight. What are the names of um, the individual and the cosmic? 111. Etat samashtyopahitam chaitanyam vaishvanaro virarityuchyate sarva narabhimanitvat vividham rajamanatvacha. Consciousness associated with this aggregate of growth bodies is called vaishvanara and virat on account of its identification with all bodies and from its manifestation in diverse ways, respectively. So, etat samashti upahitam chaitanyam. Etat samashti. Samashti, totality. Etat, this, which, this one, this totality of this universe, which we're seeing right now, consciousness associated with this entire universe is called um, Vaishwanara, one name, Virat, another name. Virat literally means the vast, Virat. Other names are there also. There is Vishwarupa, which we saw in the Bhagavad Gita. Iti Uchyate, this is, these are the names, multiple names are given. Sarva Nanara Abhimanitvat, because it is identified with all bodies. Nara literally means human body, but not just human bodies. All living creatures, animals and plants and um, uh, gods and demons and living and human beings, all of it together. Abhimani, it considers all this I am. Just like when we look at our own body and we think, this is who I am. Beyond my body, I don't think I am that. But this much I am, when we are identified with our physical body. Imagine a consciousness identified with the entire, all physical bodies, all living bodies. And then again, transcending time. So all living bodies in the past, present and future. And indeed, the, also the non-living universe. So which considers the universe itself as its body. That is called Virat or Vaishwanara. Um, Vividam Raja Manatva shining forth Raja in, in, in all this, all its glory, all its uh, you know, magnificence and glory. Imagine a being with the universe as its body, from quasars down to quarks, from galaxies to um, you know, like little birds and insects. All of it is I am. It shines in these diverse ways. So put it together. What have we got? Consciousness associated with three bodies. Causal body, which is ignorance or maya, a subtle body, which is the, you know, we read 17 parts, mind and sense organs and intellect and prana and all of that. And then third, the physical body here, this physical body. Again, this consciousness at every stage associated with causal body, subtle body and physical body can be thought of as um, individual or total. Individual like us, we are individuals or total, which is God. Just as we have um, a causal state in our deep sleep, you, you have a causal state in your deep sleep. From your perspective, there is no world, there is no mind, there is no physical body, just blankness. That's your causal state in deep sleep. Similarly, the cosmic being, God, also has a causal state, which is called Ishwara, which exists at the time of, by itself, at the time of cosmic dissolution, when the entire universe is dissolved. Vishnu alone in Kshira Shagara, that's, that's the idea. Um, then we exist with our uh, with the mind in dreams. You, the conscious being, you exist with a mind and you dream a world created by your own mind. That is uh, called the individual subtle state. Um, in, in Sanskrit, uh, the Taijasa. There's a cosmic subtle state where that consciousness exists with all the minds together. 
like an internet of minds. So that is called Hiranyagarbha. And then finally, this is what we are talking about. We exist with our physical body. The name given to us is Vishwa. And these are all terms from the Mandukya Upanishad. The name given to us is Vishwa. Similarly, that cosmic being exists right here, uh, with, identified with all physical bodies. And the name given to it is Virat, Vaishwanara, Vishwarupa, many names are given. One more point. They all exist together. So right now, for example, you are not only consciousness plus a physical body. Right now, you are consciousness plus causal body, plus subtle body, plus physical body. And it's very obvious. Right now, you don't, you're not just a body. You're thinking, feeling, breathing. So prana is there, intellect is there, mind is there, subtle body is there, and causal body is also there. Um, so all three are there together. In when you're dreaming, from your perspective, you have causal body and subtle body. When you're in deep sleep, you, you, from your perspective, you have got the causal body only. So this is how it is. Now, number 112. Asyesha samashtihi sthula shariram annavikaram annavikaratvad annamaya koshaha sthula bhogayatanatvad cha sthula shariram jagratiti cha vyapadishyate. This aggregate gross body of his is called the elementary sheath annamaya kosha on account of its being a modification of food and is said to be in the waking state on account of its being the medium for enjoyment of gross objects. All right. Some names are given to the body, the cosmic body. The cosmic being, consciousness is called Ishwara at the causal level, Hiranyagarbha at the um, mind level, subtle level, and Virat at the gross or physical level. The body of that um, cosmic being, uh, the physical body, the gross body, is called, multiple names are given, Asyesa shamashti sthula shariram. It's the collective causal body, a collective gross or physical body is called annamaya koshaha, the food sheath. For us, annamaya kosha is our physical body. For God also, this entire physical universe is the annamaya kosha. Uh, why? Annavikaratva, because it's a modification of food. For us, it's a modification of food. I mean, what we have eaten and drink, what we drink. But for God, of course, it's not eating and drinking. What you can call is, it's a modification of matter. It's a material body. So God has this material body of this universe. Uh, then, sthula bhogaya tanatvat sthula shariram. Because it's the medium for the experience. Sthula bhoga means experience of physical entities. It's a medium of experience of physical entities. Therefore, it is called sthula sharira, physical body or gross body. Also, this is the waking state, Jagrat Iticha. This is the waking state where one consciousness experiences a physical universe through sense organs. All right. So this is the, at the cosmic level. What about the individual level? We come to 113, text number 113. Etadvyashtyupahitam chaitanyam vishvaityuchyate sukshma sharira bhimanam Aparityajya sthula shariradi pravishtatvat. Consciousness associated with the individual gross body is designated as Vishwa on, its, on account of its entering the gross body, etc., without giving up its identification with the subtle body. What does this mean? It's talking about us now. Already has finished the talking about the cosmic. Now the individual, us. What are we called right now? Waking, so you are all in the waking state, sitting there in a physical body. Your name now, you the consciousness. Uh, you are called Vishwa. And what have you done? You were identified with your causal body. Then you became identified with the causal body and the subtle body. Where? In your dream state. Where are you identified with the causal body? Deep sleep state. In your dream state, you're identified with causal body and subtle body. And in the physical state, now, in the waking state right now, you're identified with causal body, subtle body, and physical body, the gross body. Without giving up identification with the subtle body, you now enter into an identification with the physical body. And you're given a technical name, Vishwa. Each of us, we have our names, but all of us, all sentient beings in the waking state, in the embodied state, we are called Vishwa. In the subtle state, in the dream state, what are we called? Taijasa. In the deep sleep causal state, what are we called? We're called Pragya. These are terms from uh, the Mandukya Upanishad, the deep sleeper, the dreamer, 
and the waker. Our names. Then, what about the body itself? Physical body, 114. Same name, Annamaya Kosha, the, the food sheet. Asya Pesha Vyashtihi, 114. Stula Shariram Annavikaratwad Eva Hetoho Annamaya Kosha Jagraditi Chochate. The individual gross body or physical body of the sentient being is also called the elementary sheath on account of its being a modification of food and is said to be uh, in the waking state. So our physical body, its name is Annamaya Kosha, uh, the, the material sheath or, or, the, or the food sheath. Food sheath because we literally what we eat and drink is modified into this body. Um, and this is the waking state. I hope you see the grand symmetry of it all how the whole thing has been developed. Imagine one consciousness in association with Maya, the totality of ignorance, it now becomes Ishwara. With parts of ignorance becomes Pragya, individual sentient beings. From that Maya comes subtle matter, which develops into subtle bodies. To say that same one, one consciousness in association with all subtle bodies, Hiranyagarbha, cosmic mind, an association with one subtle body is each of us, each, a single, every one of us has a subtle body. And from the subtle matter evolves further gross matter, physical matter, from which physical bodies, this universe comes. Same consciousness in association with all of gross matter and subtle matter and causal matter is called Virat. And in association with individual physical bodies like us, uh, it is called Vishwa. So on one side, Ishwara, um, Hiranyagarbha, Virat. On the other side, individual side, Pragya, Taijasa, uh, Vishwa. Yeah, these are the names. If you want to say in English, that pure absolute consciousness. Now on one side at the cosmic level is God, cosmic mind, and the universal being. On the individual side is the deep sleeper, is the dreamer, and is the waker. These divisions are according to causal, subtle, and gross. What is it all, this whole thing? The snake, an appearance. What's it actually? What's the real thing there? The only existence consciousness place, Brahman only. All right. Then what do we have? Now 115. Let me just give you a little background, otherwise it will scare you. <laughs> it's one of the longest sentences in the book. It's just describing our experience in the world, exactly what you're experiencing in the world. It's just describing it, but in the way those uh, ancients were used to thinking. You are now experiencing the world, you, the consciousness, are now experiencing the world through your mind and intellect and memory and ego, Antakarana the five sense organs, the five motor organs, uh, experiencing a world of um, sight and sound and uh, taste and touch and thought and intellect and memory and ego. And uh, then um, the activities of the five motor organs like walking and grasping and talking, this is our experience of the world. And that's going to be talked about here. Except the twist in the tale is uh, the ancient Hindu idea was all natural activities are presided over by devatas or gods. And these gods are the small g, is not the ultimate reality. We already talked about God. Don't get confused between God, capital G, and God, small g. God, capital G, is Ishwara, which we talked about. The absolute consciousness associated with Maya. That is the god of religion. These are small g's. They are like... Um, the closest equivalent in America would be the superheroes, you know, Superman um, and, you know, all of the Batman and things like that. So higher beings, much, much more powerful than us in charge of um, different aspects of the universe. They have got enormous powers. Uh, so our natural functions of our body, they are parts of cosmic uh, powers. So the, our ability to see or hear or smell or taste or touch our ability to think or remember, they've all got cosmic dimensions and consciousness associated with those powers are what are called devatas. 
the whole theory of gods small g gods devatas in hinduism is is pretty sophisticated and it's connected to our uh, our actual experience of the world so what you will see now he's going to tell us how we experience the world he'll talk about us our sense organs our minds our uh, intellects uh, what are the functions of the sense organs what do they do or experience and the gods small g gods associated with each of those functions that's what it is and all of it in one sentence so that's why it's a long sentence so i always have to take a deep breath before i read this sentence tadanim eto vishwa vaishwanaro dig वात अर्क वरुण अश्वी क्रम निंत्रितेन श्रोत्रादी इंद्रिय पंचक क्रम शब्द स्पर्श रूप रस गंध गंधा अग्नि इंद्र उपेन्द्र यम प्रजापति क्रम निंत्रितेन वागादी इंद्रिय पंचक क्रम वचन आदान गमन विसर्ग आनंदाश्च चंद्र चतुर्मुख शंकर अच्युत क्रम निंत्रितेन मनो बुद्धि अहंकार चिताख्य आंतर इंद्रिय चतुष्क क्रम संकल्प निश्चय अहंकार्य चैत्यांश्च सर्वान् एतान् स्थूल विषयान् अनुभवतः जागृत स्थानो बहिष्प्रज्ञा इत्यादि उच्छुते इन इंग्लिश दैट विल रीड बोथ विश्व एंड वैश्वान एट दैट टाइम परसीव द ग्रोस ऑब्जेक्ट्स नेमली साउंड टच कलर टेस्ट एंड स्मेल रेस्पेक्टिवली थ्रू द फाइव सेंस ऑर्गन्स सच एज द इयर्स एट्सेट्रा कंट्रोल रेस्पेक्टिवली बाय द प्रिसाइडिंग डीटीज द क्वार्टर्स एयर सन वरुण एंड द टू अश्विन्स they also perform the functions of speech acceptance walking excretion and enjoyment respectively through the five organs of action such as the tongue etc controlled by respectively by fire indra vishnu yama and prajapati they also experience uncertainty determination personality and remembrance respectively through the four inner organs namely mind intellect egoism and memory controlled respectively by the moon brahma shiva and vishnu witness such shruti passages as whose place in uh, is the waking state who is conscious of the external world okay <laughs> that's really a mouthful uh breaking it up what's going on here tadanim at that time at what time when you are identified with the physical universe right now for example you're talking a robot right now how you experience the world not only you but the cosmic being virat vishwa and virat vishwa and vaishwan are the two of us individuals like us and the cosmic being also so um first the five sense organs we experience the world through five sense organs five motor organs and four functions of the um the antakarna inner instrument what are the five sense organs the organs of seeing hearing um uh, touching uh, then tasting and smelling and what do they experience they experience um, sound they experience form uh, experience of uh, sound touch form uh, taste and uh, smell and they have their individual deities devatas then we have the five uh, motor organs you know um grasping of oh, speaking first of speech and then uh, uh, grasping hands and then walking hands uh, feet and then um uh, the then we have the organ of excretion and the organ of procreation the five motor organs and then the four uh, aspects of the internal organ that is uh, the the mind intellect ego and memory mana buddhi chitta ahankara 14 what has been left out are the five pranas pancha prana five pranas which power the whole thing like the battery pack that is not mentioned here and each of these um, organs has its own uh, deity so the deities are mentioned or the deity means the devatas are mentioned here i am not going to go into the break up of organ deity it's, it's very symmetrical so let me do a little bit and then i'll i'll drop it so first the five um, sense organs it says 
dig uh, vata arka varuna ashvi bhi these are the five deities the deity of the of the directions the deity of um, of uh, air uh, var, uh, arka means sun sun god varuna means the uh, the god of the oceans and the ashwin twins what do they control they control the five sense organs or the, they are the power behind the five sense organs kramat niyantritena uh, controlling in sequence shrotra um, ears so who controls the ears the deity of the uh, of the quarters the dik um, a particular uh, god or devata then the sense organ of touch is controlled by the god of wind uh, water the sense organ of ear uh, of eyes is controlled by the god um, the the deity the sun god uh, arka and in this way it's all arranged symmetrically so i think you get the general idea which sense organ what does it experience and who controls who powers or controls the whole thing what's the natural force behind it um, what do we do with these sense organs um, it says kramat in sequence shabda notice deity is the quarters the sense organ is the ears and the what it, it senses are sound is sound shabda means sound and then sparsha um, the deity is uh, the the wind god and the sense organ is the organ of touch and what we a sense with that organ the skin what we sense with that is touch like that very symmetrically five deities five sense organs five objects of the senses similarly now i'll just do this much and then we'll see the question answers whatever is there 16 atrapyanayoho sthula veshti samashtyoho tad upahita vishva vaishwa narayoho scha ट्रीज or like the reflections of the sky in quantities of water and the lake this is something that he has done at every level three levels causal level subtle level and gross level he ends by saying that there is oneness there that it is uh, it is uh, they, they, it's one reality how does he do that he compares it because of two sub schools of vedanta the reflection school and the uh, limitation school pratibhimbavada avachchedavada because of that he, he uses two examples one example is lake and drops of water how how is it one all the drops of water the millions and billions of drops of water together is what we call the lake it's not that there is another lake and there is a uh, there are other drops of water it's the same thing similarly all these physical bodies together is the cosmic body each of our bodies like a drop of water and all of them together is the cosmic body so this is one way of looking at oneness the other was the forest and trees example so what we call the forest is nothing but all the trees taken together apart from the trees there is no separate thing called the forest exactly like that apart from our bodies there is no separate entity called a cosmic body all the trees taken together is what is called the forest all the bodies taken together is what is called the cosmic body now what about us the consciousness that is compared to space it is just like the sky which is reflected in the drops of water is the sky which is reflected in the whole lake similarly consciousness which is shining in each of our uh, bodies and minds is the same consciousness which is the cosmic consciousness in all the physical bodies together the virat the consciousness called virat is nothing other than the consciousness which we all all have only in our case the same consciousness feels limited to one body in the case of the virat the same consciousness is limiting itself to all bodies that's the difference or you can take it as the space which is limited by the trees in the forest and the space which is limited by the whole forest the same space and, and the space stands for consciousness only area of space don't get confused because only at uh, uh, one tree occupies only a little bit of space and the whole forest occupies a lot of space 
that's the size of the tree and size of the forest not size of space space is unbroken and and continuous so it's the same space consciousness is not more consciousness in one body and less uh, more less consciousness in one body and more consciousness in the cosmic body it's one consciousness good 117 पंचीकृत पंचभूतेभ्य स्थूल प्रपंचोत्पत्ति दस द ग्रोस फेनोमेनल यूनिवर्स इवॉल्व फ्रॉम द फाइव कंपाउंडेड एलिमेंट्स फाइव कंपाउंडेड एलिमेंट्स ग्रोस स्काय ग्रोस एयर ग्रोस वॉटर ग्रोस ग्रोस फायर ग्रोस वॉटर एंड ग्रोस अर्थ वे डिड दे कम फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द सटल एलिमेंट्स एंड हाउ डिड दे कम यू रिमेंबर दैट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड वे ऑफ मेकिंग इन टू फाइव डिवाइडिंग एंड कंबाइनिंग विथ ईच अदर and now from that sthula prapancha utpatti the physical universe has emerged sthula prapancha physical universe has emerged what other kind of universe is there there is a subtle universe of all our minds and there is the causal universe at the level of ignorance or anandamay kosha or maya all of them they have all emerged this is the snake it is nothing there is nothing going on there it is a brahman the pure existence consciousness bliss and that's what we all are each of us is is the entire ocean of its entire uh, absolute uh, there's no parts in absolute that will be shown what is the point of all of this the point is we have now been brought to a vantage point which we can recognize okay this is our world maybe our uh, ancient ancestors that's the way they saw it but they were referring to this world which we are ex- we are experiencing now we know what they are talking about this here body mind world from here how do we go back and recognize that we are brahman and that everything is brahman we want to be, they want to tell us it's not a snake it's a rope but first point out the snake then i'll know what you are calling a rope you say there's the only reality is the rope and we'll say what do you mean what i mean is look that which you are seeing as a snake is actually a rope so first you have to point out the snake now the snake has been pointed out what's the snake this world which we took to be real which we took to be the only reality that is we said no it's not the reality at all very far from the truth and remember the ultimate objective of it all to transcend sorrow to attain satisfaction what we have been trying to do because we inhabit a world of ignorance and error and deception we are unable to find happiness because we are making mistakes we are unable to find happiness when we see the world as it is truly god brahman absolute when we know ourselves as we are truly infinite and immortal spirit then automatically all sorrows are transcended and at uh, fulfillment fulfillment attained how do we do that that's the journey back we'll start that next time but we'll been take a quick look at the questions and there's a little bit i want to finish before we go let me see if there's uh, what is the activity i know i rushed you through this but believe me it's it's not uh, all that important with regard i can see the frowns of my teachers who will be <laughs> really scandalized by the way i'm saying you can dismiss it all and replace it with modern science i had a, a senior monk who whom i to- shared this idea with several years ago maybe or 14 years ago and he did not like it at all there's a reason why let me also share that why he did not like it he said the way back from here from this physical universe to your reality as brahman is smooth an entire universe is nothing other than the five elements the five elements are nothing other than the five subtle elements and the five subtle elements are nothing other than maya maya has no existence apart from brahman you are brahman that's how it will go if you on the other hand if you ditch the whole thing and you take up something like uh, big bang and string theory and things like that modern physics there is um, no direct door open to brahman from there but there is actually because the moment you say something exists something appears in my consciousness existence and consciousness are the doors to the infinite so that's that's my argument let me see vishwanathan says acknowledging ignorance is one of the most sensible things about advaita absolutely everything else is just superstition yes and be careful i gave vent to my inner feelings but 
it can very easily lead to arrogance and, it, and a, dismiss, a dismissive attitude towards uh, other philosophies, religions, spiritual practices, only to our detriment. Uh, we need, uh, the, you know, bhakti and meditation and uh, a strong ethical foundation. Otherwise, these things will not work out for us. So knowing, so the uh, non-dualists, so Advaitins always have an uh, inner sense of, you know, superiority. This is religion for intelligent people. Everything else is religion for dummies. Uh, so that kind of feeling is there. The problem is it is justified. Um, but uh, one should be careful. It's no use knowing these things and yet being unable to overcome one's uh, problems, personal problems, and, and still saying that, look, I know better. Swami Vivekananda put it powerfully. One ounce of practice is better than 20 tons of tall talk. So he said that. We should always check where we are. When, you know, when the, they say in America, when the rubber hits the road, walk the talk. So that is a good check. And Swami Vivekananda also said, this is not the spirit of the Upanishads. When you have got something higher, you don't ditch the lower. He is, Vivekananda is very clear. This is the higher, this is the highest perspective that human beings have come across in all history and civilization. Advaita Vedanta. He is very clear. In fact, he goes more than me, further than me. He's talking about dualism to qualified monism to non-dualism. When he goes to non-dualism, he says, I'm af afraid I cannot stay with falsity anymore. <laughs> we must come to the truth at some point or the other. So look at the harsh words he dismisses every other kind of dualistic approach. So, but he says the Upanishadic spirit was never to dismiss with what went on before it. All of that was useful for me and it is useful for millions of my fellow uh, brothers and sisters. And so I should not uh, you know, pull the rug out from underneath just because you have climbed up on the, uh, you know, to the roof of the house. Don't kick the ladder away. Kirish is asking, what is the Advaitic answer to the question? If a tree falls in the forest unobserved, does it make a sound? Yes, from a phenomenal perspective or an absolute perspective, is it, right to, is it right to answer with another question? What tree, what forest? Correct. Does it make a sound? Uh, literally, no. Because a sound, what is a sound? We just saw. A sound is a sense experience. So you have these uh, waves in, uh, generated by the falling, the crashing, falling of the tree. But until it enters into a sense organ, and we saw presided over by the what the the deity of of the dick of the quarters, and is revealed to mind and consciousness, and then only you see it as a sound. Otherwise, what will it be? If there is no sentient being around, if the tree comes crashing down, it will be a propagation of waves in the air, but there will be no conscious experience of sound. Um, so sound definitely requires consciousness. It's a part of experience. So in that sense, no. But the physical counterpart of sound will be there. The waves being propagated. Of course, it will be there. It's a physical uh, event. But from the absolute perspective, from even from a phenomenological perspective, from your own experience, notice there is a forest. Nobody is observing. Not even birds and beasts. A tree comes crashing down. Will there be a sound or not? All of this is taking place in you, the consciousness. Who is talking, imagining this scenario? Consciousness. Even if you say, millions of years ago, when there were no uh, human beings, no living beings, um, and only the world was there. But this is this very scenario. Who is doing that? You are doing that right now. It is still in consciousness. The very idea of a world without any consciousness is also being set up by consciousness. This is a very simple thing. Many people don't grasp what is being said here. It's a stunning thing. You can never jump out of consciousness for anything at all. Even to discuss the possibility of a non-conscious universe, you have to do it in consciousness. Where else will you do it? To make it even more clear, when you say that this is a real world, suppose nobody was there, and, uh, and uh, you know, would it still be experienced? Would the, would the world still exist? 
isn't such a scenario possible in a dream? Yes, you could be dreaming it. When you wake up from it, it will be all in your mind, only in a conscious mind. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Rick says, maybe there are 14 worlds. Science doesn't know everything, nor have the tools to know everything. It is true. If you say, if you push a little further, so are these all, you know, our ancestors were superstitious and they had just wild imaginations? No. Notice they mentioned that these 14 worlds, one of them is our physical universe. And the rest are all, as Swami Vivekananda says, states of vibration right here. Until we have a much deeper understanding of psychology, mind, let alone consciousness, we cannot dismiss these, these ideas. You can think of them as fields of experience, for example. There are varieties of fields of experience. Even now, somebody like, from a very secular perspective, Christoph Koch was talking about, I can never pronounce that, that drug, psilocybin, um, Silo, uh, cytin, psilocytin or something. Um, so he Psilo took, psilocybin. Psilocybin, yeah. Uh, so he took this drug and he experimented on himself. He's our leading consciousness studies researcher. He's the chief scientist for the Paul Allen Brain Institute. And he talks about uh, varieties of experience of the same world, extraordinarily different ways of experiencing the world. Why can't you call it a different world altogether then? Vishwanathan says, regarding the scientific model, if Sadananda wrote the book today, he would say the quarks, etc., came out of Maya, ultimately formed the physical universe. You can, you can um, relate it to that. Pradeep Bose is saying, Maharaj Pranam, the universe, however large, is finite. So Virat or Vishwarup is also finite. Uh, Virat's body is finite, just like our bodies are finite. Virat's body is as finite as the finite universe. But without the consciousness itself is unlimited, just like we as consciousness are unlimited. You can ask the same question about ourselves. Are we finite? As bodies, we are finite, definitely. We are very limited, limited in space, limited in time. There's a point where we are born. There's a point where this body will die. There's only a limited amount of space that it occupies. So in limited in various ways. But I, the consciousness, who am at present identified with this body, am not limited. A much vaster existence is the existence of Virat uh, with this nearly infinite, but nearly infinite is nowhere near infinite. It is still a finite thing. It's a physical universe. Uh, the physical universe is also finite. And so in that sense, yes, Virat's body will be finite. It is subject to birth, change and death. The universe itself, subject to birth, change and death. Prabhupada, Bhav, when Thakur touched Mathur Bhav, we went into a higher state, we're seeing Virat or what really happened. Uh, I don't know which particular incident you're talking about. Definitely what, what Krishna uh, made Arjuna see was the Virat. Vishwarup Darshan is Virat. Shekhar is saying, Akiran is saying, Virat, Hiranyagarbha and Ishvara. These three are names and forms and appearances in consciousness. Is that correct? No, no, no. Um, well, yes and no. The question is, Virat, Hiranyagarbha and Ishvara. Are these um, names, forms, appearances in consciousness? These are nothing other than that one consciousness associated with causal body, subtle body, and um, physical body. Cosmic ca causal body, maya. Cosmic subtle body, all the minds together. Cosmic physical body, all the physical bodies together. Those bodies and minds, causal body, subtle body, and uh, physical body, they are names and forms. They are appearances. And because of them, um, consciousness itself gets these names. Virat, Hiranyagarbha, and Ishwara. It's like when I show you this, this piece of, and this, this is transparent. Now, I'm going to call it yellow crystal. You see, does it appear yellow to you now? Huh? I'm going to call it orange crystal. And I'm going to call it red crystal. Now, orange crystal, red crystal, yellow crystal, these are names because of the presence of this, this, and this, this thing. At no time did the crystal become um, yellow or orange or red. It just looked like that. At no time does consciousness actually become Virat, Hiranyagar, Bhaurishwara. Consciousness is consciousness. So these are, yes, these are names and um, names given to consciousness when, they are, when it is um, related to, associated with 
causal body, subtle body, and physical body. Yeah. Uh, so Virat, Hiranyagarbha, and Ishwara are not appearances in consciousness. They are actually consciousness itself. It's like asking you, is Kiran, am I an appearance in consciousness? No, you are consciousness itself. Advaita Vedanta will say, Tattvamasi. You, when you know yourself really, you are not Kiran. Because of this particular body, personality, and causal body. Now you, Brahman, you are now called Kiran. But what is the reality about you? You are the absolute reality. You are, you are the uh, infinite awareness, existence, bliss. Like that. So Ishwara is not an appearance in consciousness. Ishwara is the absolute consciousness. But Ishwara, all right, let's put it this way. Ishwara's Ishwaratva, um, the godness of God, is an appearance in consciousness. Then is not God God? God is the absolute, something higher than God also. We are not demoting God. We are promoting God. <laughs> Srinivas is saying, Ishwar is unlimited, infinite in his real nature. Yes. Can it be personified? Yes. According to Hinduism, uh, Ishwara can also, is also the personal God. Does Chidabhasa also illumine the cosmic mind? It does to individual minds? D yes, it does. Rodrigo, are the Dasha Mahavidya small G's? No, the Dasha Mahavidya are Saguna Brahman, Ishwara. Durga, Kali, uh, all of this, uh, Chinnamasta, all of them, they are, um, I'm not well up on my Tantra, but they are all Saguna Brahman. Sri Ramakrishna said, Kali and Brahman are the same reality. What you call, he says to the Vedantins, what you call Saguna Brahman or Ishwara, I call that Kali. Dasha Mahavidyas for others are the 10 forms of the goddess you find in the Shakta Tantras. Gabriel says, I find using Google Earth gives a beautiful visual visualization to the cosmic down to the individual level. Oh, yes, yes. That's a very, very interesting visualization. I know what you mean. Girish says, does witness count consciousness refer to Saguna Brahman or Nirguna Brahman? Witness consciousness refers to Nirguna Brahman because that is, let's call it the door to Nirguna Brahman. What is Nirguna Brahman? The witness consciousness itself, except that there's nothing left to witness. Yeah. Sakshi Chaitanya is the Nirguna Brahman. Sakshi Chaitanya is what you discover in the first step of Advaita Vedanta. I am not the body, I am not the mind. Using Drik Drishya Viveka, the discernment between the seer and the seen, or the inquiry into the five sheets uh, of the physical body, or the inquiry into the three states of consciousness, waking, three states of mind, waking, dreaming, deep sleep. You discover the witness consciousness. And that witness consciousness alone is Nirguna Brahman. It, when you appreciate the infinitude of that witness consciousness, that is Nirguna Brahman. If you do not appreciate the infinitude, if you think it's the witness of one body and mind, that's the Sankhya Purusha. The, the um, consciousness which in Sankhya is called Purusha. All right. I um, won't deal with the, uh, the comments on the chat right now. I just want to finish in a few minutes the final concluding remarks which Sadananda gives about this whole world building exercise, the snake making exercise. 118. What is he going to do here? Briefly, so that you don't feel lost. He has talked about three universes. Notice this physical universe, which we are, which we see, Stula Prapancha. And the subtle universe, the universe of all our minds together all subtle bodies together, which is sukshma prapancha. And the universe, the causal universe, which is maya, which is karana prapancha. Now, can you combine them all together into one vast universe, maha prapancha? That's what he's going to do. All of it together. The snake in its entirety. Ete sham sthula sukshma karana prapancha naam api samashtir Eko Mahan Prapancha Bhavati, Yatha Vantara Vananam Samashti Rekam Mahadvanam Bhavati, Yatha Vantara Jalashayanam Samashti Reko Mahan Jalashayaha. I will translate myself, give a faster 
free translation rather than read the English. Ete sham of all of this, all of what, whatever you've been reading about till now. Stula sukshma karana prapanchanam of the physical, subtle, and causal universes. Samashti, take them all together. Totality. Eko mahan prapancho bhavati is one vast universe. Physical universe, subtle universe, gross universe. Um, no, sorry, physical universe, subtle universe, causal universe. Stula sukshma karana prapancho, taken together, vast universe. Yatha, just like avantara bananam samashti ekam mahat banam vanam bhavati. Um, suppose this, we talked about the tree and the forests, but imagine now there is another forest near the, the, this forest and there's another, yet another forest near uh, that forest. You take all those forests together, you get a great forest, uh, Amazon or something like that. And then, avantara jalashaya nam samashti reko mahan jalashaya. If you take, if you, you talked about drops of water in a lake, but suppose there's another lake and a third lake all nearby, all connected. Can you not talk about one vast lake? Just like we talk about the Pacific and the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, but they're all connected. And, the, and it's actually one vast ocean like that. All the physical, subtle, and causal universes together as one appearance. Then, 119. Eta dupahitam vaishwanaradi ishwara pariyantam chaitanyam appi avantara vana avachinna akashavad avantara jalashaya gata pratibimba akashavad chai. Again, consciousness. Now, what happens to consciousness when you talk about the vast universe? The Virat, the Hiranyagarbha, and the Ishwara, the consciousness associated with the subtle and the causal and the gross, it is the same consciousness. Just like the sky um, in the, all the three forests together is the same sky. Just like the sky reflected in one lake is the same sky which is reflected in all the three lakes, all the lakes taken together. Similarly, it is the same, exactly the same consciousness, which is um, Ishwara, which is Hiranyagarbha, which is Virat, which is the cosmic consciousness uh, in, at the causal level, which is the, or in English, let's put it, the god of religion, the cosmic mind, and the, the cosmic physical person in this, this entire universe. All of that is actually one consciousness and the same consciousness. Finally, this is actually, he's stating the conclusion of the entire Vedanta here in technical language, which will only become evident to us at the end of the book. What he's saying, 120. Abhyam mahan prapancha tad upahita chaitanya abhyam taptaya pindavad aviviktam sat anupetam chaitanyam sarvam um, chaitanyam sarvam kalvidam brahma uh, iti mahavakyasya vachyam bhavati viviktam sat uh, lakshyam bhavati lakshyam api bhavati abhyam of these two which two the entire universe and consciousness these two prakriti and purusha uh, uh, snake and rope of these two. So really you will say, just a minute, there are not two, snake and rope. Aha, that's you, you have got the right thing. It's not two, there's only one reality. What's there? Rope only, consciousness only, not this universe. Anyway, let's, for the sake of um, the system we have developed so far, these two, um, the entire universe and consciousness. When it is not distinguished, taken together is the direct meaning of the Mahavakya, the great statement, Tattvamasi, that thou art. And when it is analyzed, it becomes the indirect meaning or implied meaning of that. What is direct meaning? What is implied meaning? And where does this that thou art come in? All of that is going to happen at the end when we put all this together. Um, the, the, uh, the direct meaning is this universe and consciousness. Indirect meaning or the implied meaning will be the absolute reality, Nirguna Brahman. And that is going to be um, the grand conclusion. But before that, lots of fine things are going to happen. Things are going to get hot and exciting and very interesting, very subtle discussions are going to come up uh, very, very soon. Real Advaita, which is the negation of all of this world building, going back to the reality 
uh, is going to start very soon. Um, let me read his concluding remarks here. He has shown us the snake. Evam vastuni avastu aropa adhyaropa samanyena pradarshitaha. So this has been shown in general, in sort of overall view. How? Um, vastuni avastu. In on reality, the unreal, the appearance has been imposed. This is called adhyaropa. Just as how? On the rope, we have been superimposed a snake. We have mistaken a rope for a snake. We have mistaken the absolute reality for uh, the universe. That has been shown till now. This started, the whole thing started on text number 33. You know, 32, from 32 onwards. And now we have come to the, to the final limit of that. The snake in all its full glory is hissing and has raised its hood. We are now confronted with samsara, just right now, what we are seeing right now. Next time onwards, it is going to take up the question, who am I? And investigate into, so what exactly am I? And then we'll be given a whirlwind tour of Indian philosophy. What do the different philosophers, uh, who are of course all dummies, we are the heroes. We're going to show what the dummies think about who am I? Uh, and then we'll show what, what really we are and so that's going to be a very nice chapter is going to come up next. Uh, so do join us. Good. We'll uh, discuss uh, more later on. And then I'll slow down after uh, when we start that portion, we'll, we'll really uh, enjoy ourselves. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Rupanamastu